This video was sponsored by Skillshare. You got a skill you're interested in pursuing but don't know where to start? Well, Skillshare's got over 30,000 classes to choose from, guaranteed to help you out. If you're an aspiring rapper or producer, you can check out Samus' lyric writing course or DJ King Arthur's series on how to punch up the depth and quality of your sound when recording. Even if you're just starting out as a musician in general, they've got all types of classes on music fundamentals, like vocal training, music theory comprehension, the basics of playing piano and guitar, seriously, anything you're possibly thinking of. And hey, if you just recently started getting paid for what you like doing, there's a bunch of videos on there on filing as a small business just in time for tax season. The first thousand people who go to the link below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription anyway, so if that sounds good, definitely scroll down to the description below and click the link. Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and it's about that time to get into the worst lyrics I just happened to hear in the last month. Let's get started. Yeah, we about to fall door, had to get ready for war. Yeah, we about to fall door, had to get ready for war. Yeah, I ain't fucking bitch so long, I do it in a Honda coach. Oh, he's so hard up for sex, he'd be willing to do it in a moderately priced automobile? Wow, how did you manage to accomplish horny and snobby at the same time? I do say, Reginald, my Jimmy's just so hard up to jump at women's bones, I'd settle for sex in a car that costs less than $30,000. <laughs> Could you imagine it, Reginald? And I went to Genius to see if maybe he had some weirdly personal beef against Honda Accords or something, but the only info I found there was a link to a tweet by Uzi verifying the lyric by saying that he hadn't had sex in over two years. Which, you know, I feel like we didn't need to know that, but, but now I'm especially confused. The super rich guy's horny as hell but hasn't gotten anyone to have sex with him? Does he not know you can just, like, pay certain people to have sex with you? I mean, his desire to get laid is clearly a priority for him. I ain't fuck a bitch so long, I do it in a Honda no. coach. So, hey, if you're that horny, hell, didn't you just buy a $24 million Vision Infinity Stone or some shit? We'll sell that and you can have all the sex and all the expensive cars you want. Unless, does he just not know that's a thing he can do? What, do we need to teach the guy about sex workers through song or something? A prostitute is someone who would love you no matter who you are if you pay them. It's true, is it? I had to my money on the I just took that bitch shopping for the hot sauce. Oh wait, he just said here that he has had sex. Well, wait, behind the store? Like, where all the company dumpsters are that smell like toxic ass? Since when the hell did sex in a $22,000 car become lower class than having sex next to a dumpster in this country? Man, our economy must be in a fucking tank. So, Muse and I recently reviewed Cypress Hill's debut album as a Kofi request on the Going Off podcast, and while it had some inventive production for its time, we couldn't help but notice their lyric writing skills were a little wonky. Like, take for instance this song, Stoned is the Way of the Walk. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's toke up, sit back, and let Be Real relay the tales of an awesome badass Buddha monk such as himself. I remember Sister Maggie, that's what kind of saggy. Uh, what? Uh, oh. Oh, okay, so she's like a cool chick that helps you out with some free weed on the side sometimes. Specifically in exchange for sexual favors. And it's not like this leads to some fun, goofy story or anything. He, he just kind of randomly brings it up and clearly seems uncomfortable about it. Just for some Mona, she wanted me to bone up the meaning. You think you know what I'm meaning? Yeah, I, I get exactly what you're meaning. That's why it's weirding me out. This ain't no exploitation. <laughs> I, I think it kinda is. Is this supposed to be the example of a day in the life of a stoned master? Dodging saggy breasted women who want to solicit sex out of you for $20 worth of weed? Oh man, being a stoned master is not nearly as cool as I thought it was gonna be. Ruffians MG. Now okay, for the most part, Lil Durk makes drill music. And sure, it's not a super deep subgenre known for tongue-twisting rhymes or anything like that. But when you say certain stuff, especially at the start of your verse, I can't help but think about it. I know a real nigga homeless, got me a deal, ain't homeless, yeah, yeah. I, uh, what's he trying to say now? Okay, let's let's break this sentence down real quick. I know a real nigga homeless. You know a rich guy who's homeless? Why is he homeless? That doesn't make any sense. Why would any person who has money not buy a place to live? Unless he's like one of those really dedicated reduce your carbon footprint type guys. And what's that supposed to mean in the context of the following line? I know a rich nigga homeless, got me a deal, ain't homeless, yeah, yeah. Is he saying like, yeah, that other guy may be all economically conscious and shit, but fuck all that. When I get my money, I'm living in a house. I like my beds warm, goddammit. Or is he talking about himself the whole time? I know a rich nigga homeless, got me a deal, ain't homeless, yeah, yeah. Like I was homeless, but now I'm not. But wait, he, he described himself as a rich nigga during the part where he said he's homeless, so so then that can't be what he means then, right? But then, I, I don't know what else he could be saying. Well, d yeah, that, that tracks, right? No one wants to take guidance from someone who's currently down on their luck. Why the hell would you want the same life advice that led to where they are? I was trying to make my night, but the process ruined my life, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Wow. Okay, then. Well, th then you're really not helping your case here, man. I mean, I don't know if this is true or not, but it's a weird thing to bring up in the context of the previous line. It's not like you admitted to having some minor misstep in your career. You just admitted to being addicted to painkillers so much it destroyed your life. So, yeah, you know, I think I can see why your friend maybe didn't think you had the best decision-making skills. Like, oh man, I can't believe all my customers abandoned my money management firm. God, you lose one lousy house to gambling debts and all of a sudden you're an unreliable financial advisor. <laughs> Judgy pricks. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell button afterwards because the bell is what actually alerts you to the new episodes. If you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, check out my link tree below for my Twitch streams, merch, movie and album review podcasts, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.